Hey everyone, today I'm just walking home back, I'm walking back home, sorry, <laughs> after watching Avatar The Way of Water, as you can see from the title of the video, I see, I'm see seeing this, the day of release, it's Wednesday, actually it's already Thursday because it's Thursday like at 2am or something, I mean it's fucking late <laughs> because the movie started... Uh, on Wednesday, whatever Wednesday it is, 14, 13 something, um, you know, at 10.30 p.m. or something, you just know that the previews take like 400 hours, which is kind of annoying, and then, you know, people have bought their seats, their tickets, so I think they stall for people to go in, but whatever. You don't want to hear that, you want to hear about the movie. And I have to say that, yes, it's very useful if you watch uh, the first Avatar, of course, from 2009, winner of several Academy Awards, nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, you know, it was like a thing. Avatar when it came out and of course it's the most um, profitable movie ever in the box office I mean it, it has earned almost like three billion dollars which is kind of insane of course so this movie has a lot to live up to of course so I have to say with no spoilers it's it's kind of hard not to talk spoilers but i have to say that this movie is more epic more grand more powerful in many ways than the first movie i think the first movie was hurt a lot by the fact that it resembled so many other movies and not only that but also that it resembled you know pocahontas that was called out like pretty early on the movie's release and it was true you know it was pocahontas with a twist let's say with some changes but it was basically the same thing just as you know other uh, the lion king is macbeth or whatever i mean it, that happens a little bit too much and with disney it happens a lot of course back then it was fox but whatever so i, I think this one is Grander is a little bit more fun, to be honest. I don't really like the military aspect that the movie has. Of course, it's it's a point. You know, they, they want to make the point across with those references to the military, to the military way of doing things, with um, everything that has to do with colonization, uh, with the occupation of the land. Of indigenous peoples you know all of that of course it's kind of obvious it's not that I wanted it to change completely or something but you know I think the movie struggles a little bit when it looks a little bit too much like the first one like we, we already had that story so why do it again and I do understand that uh, they want us to to teach us a little bit more about Pandora and about the Navi and about, you know, the interactions of the Navi with the humans. But I would say that I think the humans should have stayed in, on Earth or wherever. And this movie should have been about something else, another threat maybe, or, you know, maybe they live in a star system where other moons or planets are inhabited and the interaction with humans has, you know, awakened those people's interests or something, you know, it would have been so interesting. Although I don't think that's where this franchise wants to go because as you know, Avatar 3, 4 and maybe 5 are like on the horizon, which is kind of insane. I think that 3 is okay, but 4 and 5 is a little bit too much. But yeah, I mean, the, the thing is that this movie, I think, repeats a little bit too much of the first. And I'm afraid for it because I don't know if it's sustainable to do another one with the same themes. Because, of course, I mean, if you see the end, you see the end. I'm not going to spoil it. But you know what happens, or at least a part of what happens in Avatar 3. So... You know, I, I don't understand why so many sequels and so, many, so much story to be 
telling the same thing over and over again, like we got it. And I think that James Cameron, outside some of his franchise, you know, um, work, like in Aliens, of course, in Avatar, maybe Titanic, of course, and a couple of other movies. Besides those, I mean, James Cameron has not had really had hits lately and has not had the best track record at maintaining those franchises. I mean, of course, he dropped out of Out of Alien, I mean, permanently. Ridley Scott just took over that. And even Ridley Scott dropped it, so whatever. And, you know, Terminator, the Terminator franchise is now it's dead and it's awaiting another revival or something because, I mean, even James Cameron couldn't save it with the last uh, Terminator Salvation or whatever it was, Dark Fate. Uh, so, you know, it, it's kind of difficult to, to, to make these franchises sustainable. I mean, just ask Marvel, just ask DC that, I mean, they cannot do this do it. I mean, they have been struggling for, I mean, Marvel has been struggling for the last two years after the pandemic to deliver something that fans are like, okay, this is new, this is fresh, I like it, but I mean, the box office talks and it says a lot. I think that, so having said that, I think that in the Academy Awards and all the awards and things, I know it got some nominations on the Golden Globes, but to be very honest, I don't think it should be nominated for Best Screenplay, because the screenplay, again, it's a repetition on a repetition on a repetition, like we know. It's funny at times, it's, in, it's interesting, but I don't think it's that, that original, to be honest. I, mean, I don't think it's that new, I don't think it's that fresh, and I think that affects the movie overall. Um, as for the performances, I mean, the thing with franchises is that they often don't get the best performances ever. Sigourney Weaver has some interesting things going on. I mean, her character is very interesting. Um, maybe, I, I mean, I don't even know who else. I mean, maybe the bad guy. I don't remember the, the actor's name. Maybe him is interesting, but not really because he's portraying a stereotype, to be honest. And he's doing the same stereotype that in the first movie, so... I, I don't really think acting is a big thing in this movie. I think the cinematography is beautiful. I think the art direction is gorgeous. Super gorgeous. Very simplistic, actually, which I was surprised by. Uh, even the costume design is really, I mean, it's not a lot, but it's very effective, I will say that. Of, of course, the visual effects, this movie is going to win the Academy Award for best visual effects. We know it, let's move along. And it's probably winning best sound too, because I mean, the sound is fantastic. and I mean, it, it influences some of the sequences in the movie. As for anything else, I mean, Best Director? I don't think it's a lock for Best Director at all, to be honest. Although this year is, has been so weak, to be honest, for movies, that maybe James Cameron has a shot to be nominated. I mean, he won't win for shit, but he could be nominated or something, you know. Is it the best picture of the year? Maybe because of the technical achievements and because for cinema, this is a milestone, of course. It's it's fantastic that you can do... Basically, everyone in the movie is like an alien. So that's amazing. That's surprising and that's cool. And, and you can see the advancements. And maybe because of that, it should be nominated for Best Picture. But to be fair, I don't know, think, it, it, I don't know if it's enough. I don't think it's going to win. Like, for shit. I mean, I, I don't understand why it should win. To be honest, I, I'm very apprehensive about that. I mean, I'm not saying the movie is bad. I'm just saying for what the first one did, it should have been a little bit better. Even though the movie is uh, very grand and very interesting and very awe-inspiring, it should have been a little bit better, to be honest. And yeah, for example, not many women, 
on the movie not maybe people of color in the movie I mean, I mean you can re you cannot really see if people are people of color maybe you can see like through the alien skin or whatever but yeah I mean it's not the most obvious thing ever and of course the fact that Kate Winslet is basically portraying an indigenous person <laughs> it's kind of insulting to be honest so you know the, the movie has a lot going for it but at the same time it has a lot against it I, I, I think and again I'm not hating on this picture at all if I was a great kind of person I would give it a solid four I think it's good I think it's recommendable I think um, you should go and see it because it's a spectacle I watched it on 2d but people say in 3d it's amazing I just don't want didn't want to watch 3d because I use glasses and if I use another pair of glasses on top of that um, the light is a bit dark you know the it's too sh shady if that makes any sense so yeah that's all I want to say from this movie but you know you have to go and enjoy it for yourself I think it's a fantastic again fit for cinema I think it has very interesting themes I think it's very enjoyable I think you shouldn't drink anything when watching this movie because I had to run out in the middle of the movie to pee because I was about to burst but yeah just go and watch it and enjoy it and let's hope it makes people go to the movies and maybe be interesting in not only watching this one but in, in watching other movies that might be just as interesting so thank you so much for watching this video and see you soon bye